They said there was a treasure on the island, its location known only by the dead. I could see it in my dreams. How was I supposed to know that in order to find it, I'd have to die too? Spirits and specters from regions unknown, guide to me the wanderer who searches alone. <laughs> well, welcome back, Murphy McCallum. Have you found all five ingredients for the spell? I found three so far. Only two are left, the chalk and the coffin nails. Hurry, the island will lead you to that which you seek. I have no doubt about that. How will the spell help me find the lost treasure of Belmore Manor? There are things on this island that have gone unseen. Stories that have been left unheard. At least immortals. I commune with regions beyond. Let me introduce you to a friend. Out of the shadows, the cursed and the damned, return now my servant to do my command. I have returned to you, master. Loa, this gentleman wishes to find the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. Tell him how this can be done. Only inhabitants of the house know where the treasure lies. Their spirits still within its walls, trapped between life and death. To ask them, those spirits must be revealed on the mortal plane. And that is what our spell will do, Murphy. A summoning spell to unveil the ghosts trapped within the house. Five ingredients place inside, tie closed, and then unseal. Within the focus what may hide, this spell will soon reveal. Once you've collected all five, we can summon the ghosts of Belmore Manor. Once we've summoned the ghosts, we can ask them exactly where the treasure was hidden. You have served me, Loa. Be gone! Who is the creature that you talk to? That is my Loa. The Loa are the mysteries, the invisibles, the messengers. Is it a ghost? No. They are the intermediaries between humans and the supernatural. There are two planes of existence, Murphy. The mortal plane and the spirit plane. Loas can move between them both, and with my powers, I can control them when they do. That is what we practitioners of the occult are adept at. Do you know what happened at Belmore Manor? You want to hear a ghost story, Murphy McCallum? I want to know everything I can about that house. Then listen closely. Dark magic runs throughout Belmore Manor. The house was built by the Belmore Brothers, three merchants from England who made their fortune trading across the Caribbean. Xavier Belmore, an explorer, Yardley Belmore, an actor, and Cecil Belmore, a scientist. Their parents dead for many years. They each loved and cared for their young sister, Abigail. And Abigail met a young sailor who worked aboard one of her brother's ships. In less than a year, he proposed. The engagement was a scandal. Despite having the pick of any eligible bachelor in high society, her hand and the Belmore fortune was to go to a commoner. Because of their unconditional love for their young sister, the Belmore brothers sanctioned the marriage. But people began to wonder if Abigail was being locked into marriage, whether by blackmail or 
black magic. Grand wedding was planned by the three proud brothers. But in the months leading up to the wedding, each of the brothers, one by one, was lost, presumed dead. And yet the wedding was still to go ahead. And with Abigail set to inherit the Belmore fortune once she came of age, many people began to wonder whether the sailor was not a perpetrator, but a pawn. On the morning of the wedding, the sailor was summoned to her chambers. I don't love you, Abigail declared. I never loved you. And to everyone gathered in the house, Abigail declared that that same evening, she would marry another, John Rackham, first officer of the Belmore Trading Company, would be her new groom. Except that didn't happen. On the night of the wedding, everyone in the house suddenly and mysteriously vanished. Perhaps the last revenge of the scorned sailor. The house that night held a heart that would be broken, a victim who would be tricked, and a force that would unleash evil. But no one knows exactly who each was. If you want to find the treasure, Murphy, you'll have to find out. How am I going to find the spell ingredients? Everything I've ever needed for my voodoo spells, I have found on this island. It's as though this island pulls the supernatural to it. Keep searching. Once that's complete, I will show you the final step of the spell. How did you learn voodoo? I've always been adept with the mystic arts. Just as you dream of treasure, Murphy, I dream of power. I came to Devil's Rock many years ago, drawn by its voodoo energy. And no sooner than I arrived, the spirit world began to reveal itself to me, pleading for me to be its master. Why is this island such a focus of voodoo energy? I suspect the answer to that question already lies in what you're seeking. What's this riverboat we're aboard? This is the Spirit Queen. It used to be a pleasure boat, plying the rivers around the island, a den of drinking and gambling. That's how I came to own the boat, a lucky game of chance. But between you and me, Murphy, it's a lot easier to win when you have spirits to control the roll of the dice. It sounds like you cheated. Fate was always going to bring this boat to me. I just hurried it along. I'm going to finish finding the voodoo ingredients. Hurry back. I took the taxidermied fish from the rotting wooden frame. With a bit of elbow grease, I pushed up the wooden window frame. Pressed against the inside wall was a dusty desk covered in spider webs, and on top it, one thing lay undisturbed, a small folded document which I picked up, along with an unintentional eight-legged companion Ugh! Ghost stories and haunted treasures I could handle, but spiders gave me the creeps. I filled up the bottle with the swamp water.
Hello. Ah, concern it. Don't sneak up on people like that. You frighten the dying daylights out of me. He looked at me like he'd seen a ghost. Sorry, you seem a little jumpy. I thought you were those pesky kids again. Kids don't seem like a reason to be scared. They're little terrors. I'm sure they're gonna give me a heart attack. Last week, they showed up with a doctor's note they forged. Saying a man I'd buried that day was just a very deep sleeper. Seven hours I was out here digging him up, at my age! And was he sleeping? Dead as a dodo. Just like those kids will be if I get my hands on them. My name's Murphy McCallan. I've just arrived on the island. Well, welcome, Mr. Murphy. I'm Edgar Kettle, grave digger, undertaker, coffin maker, and anything else that needs doing to keep this cemetery running. I'm looking for the treasure of Belmore Manor. Another treasure hunter. Well, let me tell you something, young man. Don't even think about digging up my graveyard. There's no treasure buried here, and I'm already busy enough filling in the holes that are meant to be here. Have you ever accidentally buried someone who is still alive? Not that I know of. When you think about it, how would I know? Shouts for help? Desperate shaking of the coffin? Look, I haven't sealed anyone up who was chatting away with me, let's put it that way. I usually check for signs of life, but everyone takes shortcuts sometimes, don't they? <laughs> I deserve some rest in peace, too. Has the cemetery been here long? This cemetery is the whole reason Devil's Rock is populated. Back when the mainland was first settled, they used to ship off the bodies of undesirables to be buried here. The criminals and paupers. St. Juniper's church up on the hill was one of the first structures here, along with the fort. So that's what this place became. A cemetery island. A place where only Beelzebub himself would take the bodies that were interred into its caves and tunnels. The Devil's Rock. Creepy. So there are caves and tunnels on the island? Oh yes, all over it. Some natural, some man-made. No one knows where they really are, though. I'm quite surprised I've yet to dig myself down into one. They say there's one that runs from the church to the crypt just down the path. An old escape route. But I've never been in there. Do you know anything about the disappearance at Belmore Manor? I think it's important to leave the dead to rest in peace. But what if they're not in peace? Well, I think there's more to that story than meets the eye. You know the three brothers went missing, right? Well, if you ask me, I think Abigail Belmore was behind it. She was engaged to a sailor. But nobody like her would go for a commoner. She might have loved him. She could have loved somebody with a big bank account, too. I think she must have been using him, pretending to love him so he'd do her dirty work for her, bumping off her brothers. Then afterwards, she drops him and goes to marry the officer of the company, Fiendish. Those are some pretty serious allegations. Just a feeling, that's all. I don't have any evidence. But when you work with cadavers, you kind of get a sixth sense about things. People killed in mysterious circumstances. Like you can tell when someone's sneaking up behind you. You actually seem to have trouble with that. Wise guy. What do you think was behind the disappearance? Well, the sailor must have found out he was being manipulated, mustn't he? Done something to get his revenge. What do you think the sailor did to get his revenge? Nobody knows. But in his contracts to the Caribbean, he could have come across something fiendish. All we know is that everyone in that house disappeared. And to tell you the truth, I'm quite relieved they did. Why's that?
Because if they had not disappeared, it would be this old fool who'd have had to bury them. Saved me a good amount of work. Have you got any spare coffin nails? No, I don't got any to spare. I have to buy these out of my own pocket. Do you know how much the parish gives me per burial nowadays? <laughs> a pittance. The roof's leaking, my table's broken. I've used floorboards to build some of the coffins. Take my advice. Don't go into this line of work. I'm telling you, undertaking's a dying business. Do you not find working in a graveyard a little eerie? Why would it be eerie? I don't know. Ghosts, maybe? I don't like to think about ghosts. Why not? Because they'd be bad for business. I have my work cut out here with the dead as it is. Imagine if they came back asking for a refund. What are you working on? This is just a pauper's coffin the parish is funding. Lock him in lumber, leave him to slumber. That's what I call it. No frills. This will end up five feet under by the end of the night. I thought it was supposed to be six feet. You're not the one doing the digging. Five feet means I get a tea break. Why are you out here working so late? The funerals take place in the morning, and I prefer to be tucked up in my bed. I don't like those early funerals. I'm not a morning person. Do you think I could fit inside the coffin? Probably not. The gentleman inside might make it a bit of a squeeze. You mean there's a dead guy inside there? There better be. I can't afford to be burying empty coffins. Creepy. Story of my life. Did the coffin just move? Don't even joke about that. I best be running along. Don't drop dead. I don't want anything else adding to my to-do list. The tin was empty. Framed by trees and lit by moonlight, Belmore Manor stood imposingly in the still night air. Even without lights on, it felt like something inside the house was calling me, or warning me. The horseshoe was too high up to reach. So much for good luck. I picked up the horseshoe that assaulted me. It was heavy, very heavy. Walking into the port town of Dead Nettle, I could sense its history in every stone, brick, and plank. Echoes of merchant ships loading and unloading all manner of cargo from expeditions throughout the Caribbean. Golden treasure that may still lie hidden on the island. The sign read, the fantastic Fantaccio brothers will be performing tonight. People of all ages welcome. Donations welcome even more so. Good evening. He looked past me like I was invisible. As though if he ignored me hard enough, there was a chance I'd disappear. I said good evening? I suppose if one's standards are low enough. Have you taken a wrong turn, sir? I'm just having a look around. Well, make it a quick one. Who are you? My name is Felix Greer, maitre d', bartender, and acting manager of the Captain's Club. When Mr. Perkins has his night off. And who, pray tell, are you? Murphy McAllen. I'm looking for the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. Oh, goody. Another young adventurer seeking fame, fortune, or some combination of the two. Just what Dead Nettle's been lacking for local color. What is this place? This, sir, is the Captain's Club, 
a private members club for current and retired sea and riverboat captains. We are highly exclusive. Are you a captain? He asked with a smugness that told me he already knew the answer. I thought not. Then may I recommend a swift exit? You'll find a convenient egress approximately 180 degrees to starboard. If you like, I can give you a good swift kick in the right direction, sir. And don't feel a need to stop walking until your ankles get soggy. What do you serve here? Captains. Right, yes. I mean by the way of food? The Captain's Club serves a dazzling array of sea source dishes, from our house special jambalaya, to my personal favorite, Devil's Rock Pencoza, pan seared with lobster slaw and citrus crawfish beer blanc. In all honesty, it's not very popular. Most of the clientele are absolutely sick of seafood by the time they get ashore. Just the sight of it makes them groggy. What about drinks? Listen, if you're from the Prohibition Bureau, we've cleared all that up with Officer Mo. Fines were paid, things changed hands, and now we're clear. I'm not from any Prohibition Bureau. Then forget I said anything. The Captain's Club is strictly teetotal in line with federal law. Now, if certain members wish to bring in their own medicinals, then we're happy to provide medicinal aids. Ice, tonic, mixers, and the like. But we serve no alcohol on the premises. What can you tell me about dead nettle? Do you think you've wandered into the local library? Should we gather around for story time? I was just hoping to talk to someone obviously so knowledgeable about the area. Well, yes, unfortunately I'm plagued with an encyclopedic knowledge of the local area. My concierge duties require it. I have a spiel. Welcome, hardy traveler, to our quaint port town of Dead Nettle. Once this town you see around you was a hub of commerce, a beacon for ships bravely navigating between America, Europe, and the Caribbean. With the unfortunate dissolution of the Belmore Trading Company, our town has settled into a quieter life, perfect for the sailor ready to hang up their cap. We hope that you enjoy your time in our homely town and perhaps explore some of the local sites. With the Captain's Club always here is your home port. Why was the Belmore Trading Company dissolved? Well, you're taking me off script, but it really was quite the scandal. The three owners of the company vanished, and there was simply nobody left to run the company. Wasn't there anyone who tried? The first officer of the company, Mr. Rackham, looked to step up, but he disappeared too. I do wish the company hadn't collapsed. I bet lots of people share that wish. I might have more customers if it hadn't. What do you know about the lost treasure of Belmore Manor? Do you think you're living in a storybook? Whether maps, talking parrots, X marks the spot? Grow up, you silly boy. Captaincy is an accomplished skill which doesn't need belittling by childish tales like lost treasure. What do you know about the Belmore Wedding? You mean the disappearance of the Belmore Wedding. On moonlit nights when the waves crash against the rocks, the captains of this club trade yarns about this very mystery. Did you know Abigail Belmore's fiance was a sailor who worked on the ships? Some of the old boys here even worked with him. They say he loved her, as true as a captain loves the sea. But she was a temptress, a siren who scuttled that sailor's heart. What did she do? After months of engagement, she broke it off and chose to marry an officer of the company instead, on their very wedding day. Who was the man she chose to marry instead? John Rackham, a landlubber who only used the bounties of the sea to fill his coin purse. But the Belmores harnessed his ambitions for the company, his expertise at imports and exports. Why did she do it? What many people don't know is that mysterious things had been found on one of the company voyages to the Caribbean. Mystical things, some say. What did they find? The crew was sworn to secrecy by the Belmore brothers, and all of the men were loyal enough to keep their word. But the rot in the rope was that sister, Abigail. People say that the discovery took hold of her. With the broken heart of the sailor and the resources of the officer, she was about to unleash something terrible. Perhaps it was a good thing that they all disappeared. Do you think that's true? Of course not. It's all nonsense. But the captains do love to outperform each other with such tales on a dull evening. What makes you think I'm not a captain? Well, for one thing, you lack the grizzle, the crustiness, the essential R of a captain. How do I get those? Years of exposure to salt water and sullen, uncooperative crew members, I should think. Tell me, have you ever captained a three-rigger through a tropical typhoon? Have you ever run the rapids of the Mississippi without hitting a single reef? Wind in your sails, fire in your furnace, waves beneath your keel? Have you? Well, um, it's more complicated than that. In what way? I get seasick. Is there any way to prove I'm a captain? You might show me your captain's license. 
As I'm sure you know, the state of Louisiana requires all captains, both sea and riverboat, to carry one. But don't try to force me off with a fake. Last week, we had someone present a license with a photograph distinctly unlike their contemporary appearance. The photograph was clearly of someone a good deal older than them, with more facial hair and, most importantly, one less eye. You know, I must have left my license in my other pants. Certainly, sir. Hopefully, I'll be able to read it, seeing as I was apparently born yesterday. I best be casting on. Don't feel the need to rush back, sir. The latest newspaper contained a photograph of the fishermen on the docks, with a headline declaring he'd just broken the island's heaviest catch record. Nothing else was of interest. You! Stop right there! What's your name? Um, Murphy McAllen. I haven't seen you before. What's your business? I'm just visiting. Why do you need to know? Because your business is my business, and my business is news. I'm Evelyn Stoker, editor of the Juniper Parish Gazette. No misdeed left unshared, no drama left unmonetized. Come on, work with me here, Murphy. I need something juicy. Committed any crimes? Uncovered any affairs? Any deep, personal secrets to reveal? The honest-to-God truth. No. I need a good story. I can't always let something minor like the truth stand in the way of that. Yes? Hi. What are you working on? Listen to this. An innocent victim's domesticated canine has been suddenly and mysteriously ripped away from them by fate. Its location and intentions are unknown. Wait, are you talking about a lost dog? Technically, it's not lost anymore. It was found shortly before I got to the house. But still, the story must be written. I have a headline suggestion. Lost dog, not lost. I have a personal suggestion. But out. Don't you have more interesting stories to write about? The crackpots this island calls a population wouldn't know something interesting if they paid for it. Which they hardly do. Believe me, I've tried to get juicier stories. Scouring the island, doorstop interviews, hiding beneath windows. You eavesdrop on people through their windows? It's called investigative reporting. I'm doing some research on the treasure of Belmore Manor. Leave it. That's my advice. There's no story in it. No story? Not that anyone would believe. And I've got advertisers breathing down my neck. What's your theory on Belmore Manor? This might sound far-fetched, but I think it was hypnotism. All the puzzle pieces make sense. Who was hypnotized? Abigail, by that strange sailor she was going to marry. This newspaper had been publishing a bunch of stories about spooky goings-on across the island. We even had tip-offs of black magic inside Belmore Manor. Can you believe it? Who was doing black magic? Well, we weren't told for sure, but it makes sense, doesn't it? The sailor! Why else would someone as powerful as Abigail want to marry a lowly manual worker like him? Come the night of the wedding, and she wised up. Married John Rackham, the company's first officer. Much more on her social standing, and a responsible choice for the company. What do you think caused everyone to disappear? The last revenge of the sailor's sorcery. But imagine me writing that into a piece of serious journalism. I'd be laughed out of the industry. What's in those filing cabinets? Past issues of the newspaper, starting right back in 1864. Of course, things were a lot more interesting when Deadnuddle was thriving as a port town. Comings and goings of people, ships, and cargo. Lots to report on back then. More than the dregs I have to dress up now. Can I take a look in the filing cabinets? Sorry, McAllen. Employees only. And we're a one-woman operation here these days. The paper doesn't bring in enough money to take people on. Why did the ship stop coming to Deadnuddle? The Belmore Trading Company was the heartbeat of this island. After the disappearance, there was no one left to run the company, and it all got sold off. When that folded, so did pretty much everything else. 
Do you have any back issues featuring the Belmore Manor wedding? We don't, I'm afraid. Most of the paper's directors were at the wedding and disappeared along with everyone else. The newspaper had to shut up shop for weeks while it was restaffed. This was back when the Gazette wasn't run by just one person. Would you take my photograph? Do you know how much the chemicals cost to develop those photographs? I'm on a limited budget here, McAllen. Unless you've done something notable, you're not getting into print. What constitutes something notable for the newspaper? Frankly, our standards are pretty low these days. Yesterday, I photographed Ned Kipps, the fisherman that hangs around the pier, for catching a fish. Is that a surprising turn of events for a fisherman? It broke the island weight record. The pen causes a fish that's been caught around the island since it was settled. The locals say it tastes good. I'd rather chew on raw cotton. I think I better be going. Keep your eyes out for a story, McAllen. There are secrets on the island, and it's my job to sell advertisements next to them. Are the fish biting? Well, not so well today to tell the truth. They must have been spooked by something. But you should have seen them yesterday. I was having to fight them off the rod. The name's Ned Kipps, by the way. Just Kipps to my friends. I'm Murphy McCallum. Nice to meet you, Mac. What are you doing on this old rock anyway? I haven't seen you around before. Here on vacation? I guess you could say that. Then you got worse judgment than an arm wrestler squaring up to a cracker. Hope you don't regret it. Me too. What's that book you're reading? The Louisiana Book of Records. There's this fish called a pinkoza that swims around these parts. Delicious barbecue. And you're looking at the fella that's caught the heaviest pinkoza ever weighed at the dead nettle docks. Now I'm looking to see if it's a state record, maybe even national, or a world record. That's some achievement. Oh, it was. Got my photograph on the front page of the newspaper and everything. What do you do with the fish you catch? A couple I save for myself, and the rest I sell to the captain's club. They fancy them up with lemon lobster, slawfish something or other. Fools. Everyone knows the best way to cook them is to barbecue them. But then again, I haven't eaten in that place my whole life. Why not? I don't have a captain's license, so they won't let me in. Don't you have a fishing boat? Nah, I used to. The Petit Pache. But they don't count it if it doesn't have a crew. What happened to it? That's it across the harbor with this bow sticking out the water. It was the strangest thing. There I was, fishing just out in the bay, when a sea serpent comes out the water, wraps itself around the boat. Well, I was going to be a goner. Jab my fishing pole right in its beady eye, throttled the motor, and managed to make it back to show just as the hull went under. It's lucky I made it out alive. That's a pretty tall tale. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. It was clear that Ned had a penchant for fanciful stories. He told them with such vigor, I think he'd convinced himself they were true. How do you catch a pinkoza fish? Oh, it's not for the faint of heart, Murphy. Decades of practice, hours of patience. I tell you this, I doubt you'll ever beat my record. Don't worry, I'm no fisherman. You know, I could write my own book, put my techniques in that, or an autobiography. Sea serpents, cracking, sunken treasure. I just need a snappy title, something exciting, something dangerous. Something that'll get the book picked up off a shelf. I know. Fish and kips. That'll work. I'm looking for the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. Well, I've heard a tall tale or two, but even I'm not spending my time looking for that. It's been lost for 30 years now. Lost means it's still ready for finding. I've traveled every waterway on this island, and I haven't even seen a hint of it. It could be at the bottom of the ocean for all I know, and I've found a few treasures in my time. French treasure, British treasure, pirate treasure, but no Belmo treasure. Do you still have those treasures? Well, I had to hide them again. Give someone else a chance to find them. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. What do you know about the disappearance at Belmore Manor? Now there's a tale to tell. You know about Miss Belmore? The bride engaged to the sailor? I heard she was having an affair. Getting up to no good with this fellow called John Rackham. He was one of the Belmore Company's higher ups. Anyway, Sailor catches wind of it and tricks Rackham into giving the lady a gift. That's what caused everything to go topsy-turvy. What was the gift? Call me a liar, 
But there are places in the Caribbean that trade things more elusive than gold. Ungodly things. Is that what you think caused the disappearance? What else could it be? What can you tell me about Miss Belmore? Ah, Abigail. More beautiful than a mermaid, and twice as fishy. Seems like such a nice girl, too. Until the affair. It seems so unlike her. What about the sailor? Don't know much about him. Never met the fella. I never got involved in the dock work, to tell the truth. Always preferred to sit with my fishing pole and fend for myself. We all figured that Abigail being in love with him and everything. He must have been fine folk. I think we were wrong. Poor Rackham, though. He was wronger still. I'm a business guy myself. Get the product, sell the product. Nothing wrong with bringing home the bacon. But he brought back trouble, and he paid the price. I suppose it was a mistake for him to get involved with Abigail. It's risky mixing business and pleasure. Catch you later, Ned. See you around, Matt. It was the taxidermied fish I'd taken from the riverboat, with a ripped seam opening up to the stuffing inside of it. With the ripped seam as an opening, I placed the horseshoe inside the taxidermied fish. Now it was heavy. Matt, does that say what I think it does? You've been holding back on me. That breaks my record. McCallum! You just broke the island fishing record. How did you hear about this so fast? It's my job to know about things fast. Now, I'm doing the questions here. So what led to this unbelievable turn of events? Years of practice, or a one in a million fluke? Did the fish just jump into your lap as you walked the quayside? Was the fish dropped by a passing seagull? Would have been a pretty darn big seagull. Um, just beginner's luck, I guess. As I suspected, well, as much as it pains me to say it, you're the cover story on this evening's edition of the Juniper Parish Gazette, and this is why I'm not getting a Pulitzer. I've got to hand it to you, Mac. That fish is a whopper. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Murphy, have you seen the cover of the evening edition? I think we caught your personality perfectly in that photograph. Naive, simple, unsophisticated. Makes it all the more surprising that you actually accomplished something. I wonder if I should have it framed. That will cost you. I picked up the newspaper. The fewer people that saw it, the better. Carefully, I cut my photograph out of the newspaper. I stuck the cutout photograph onto the still tacky interior of the captain's license. It was convincing enough. My credentials. You're telling me you are a captain? I trust it's all in order. Look, Sonny, the bylaws of this club only allow the club manager to verify a captain's license. And Mr. Perkins is enjoying his backgammon evening with Mrs. Perkins and the ladies this evening, with strict instructions not to be disturbed. So I'll be accepting this tonight, but try this again tomorrow night and it'll be another story. Now, with that said, a warm and hearty welcome to the captain's club. We sincerely hope you make use of and enjoy our facilities, and do please let me know if I can be of any assistance at all.
With the jack removed, the table rocked freely. I tied the twine to the uneven table and took up a hiding spot behind a nearby wall. It was time to wake the dead. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Why is it so dark in here? Huh? Who's that? I'm... <coughs> I'm stuck! Help! Help! If that's you kids... Get me out of this thing! <coughs> oh no, not again. Mister, are you okay? I'm so sorry. I was told... Mister? Oh, God darn it! Next time I see those kids, I'm gonna have a lineup of peewee coffins ready for them. See how they like being scared out of their wits. I picked up the handful of discarded coffin nails from the tin. It was a small leather pouch with a drawstring used for voodoo spells. Currently, it held black feathers, gunpowder, and rum. It was a voodoo manuscript that looked hundreds of years old with the instructions to a spell that summons things hidden within. You've returned. Have you found all the ingredients and placed them in the gree gree? Not yet, but I'm working on it. I found another ingredient for the summoning spell. Wonderful. Place it inside the Gree Gree, then return when you have all five. I'm going to finish finding the voodoo ingredients. Hurry back. I placed the coffin nails into the Gree Gree. I placed the chalk into the Gree Gree. I've done it. All five ingredients for the summoning spell. Now I needed to head back to the Spirit Queen. Murphy, have you done what was asked of you? I have. Wonderful. Now, it is time for the final step. Out of the darkness, the sadness, the fear, I command you, my servant, now to appear! I have returned, Master. What is your desire? The ingredients have been gathered. The final step of the spell is ready. The focus. The focus of the spell is that which you are casting it upon. Belmore Manor is where the ghosts reside. An image of Belmore Manor is what you must direct the spell with. Murphy, do you have an image of Belmore Manor we can use? I folded the magazine cover and placed it inside the Gree Gree. The spell is ready. Finally, the ghosts will be free again. Open the Gree Gree, Murphy, and that will cast the spell. With some trepidation, I took the Gree Gree from my pocket and then, with a deep breath, opened it. I am free. Servant, what's happening? I was never your servant. I am your master. You shall do my bidding. I command you. Foolish mortal, you have served your purpose. No longer do I need to manifest as an ephemeral specter. Now my true spirit form is freed. Loa, 
do as I say. You have no more use to me. I wasn't sure what I'd just seen, but the voodoo fire raging all around me was all too real. I needed to get out, and fast. 